Okay. Well, welcome. Happy New Year to where all of you, wherever you are, and welcome to the very, very first Global Rich Dad Advisor Hangout. I want to congratulate you all for being here. I know there's people from Norway, from Asia, from South America, Peru, every place. So thanks for being here, and congratulations, and welcome to 2014. Uh, my name, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Blair Singer. I'm one of the Rich Dad Advisors to Robert Kiyosaki in the area of sales, team, and personal development. And it's really an honor to have you guys all here on, on this first ever global hangout. And the way we got here is as a, a group of advisors, we we're thinking, how can we get to more people? You know, it's 2014. You know, for some people, it's going to be a great year. For some people, it's going to be a terrible year. And so we thought, what could we do to support you, to support the community, and being able to give you the good real-time information at the lowest cost to you and the greatest value? Because those of you that have followed Rich Dad for all these years, or maybe just new to Rich Dad, you, you put yourself in the right place at the right time to take advantage of the right opportunities. So that's why we're here. We're here to, do, to mentor you as best, as best that we can. As a matter of fact, by the end of this uh, hangout, you'll have the opportunity to take the next step with us if you're interested in that, where we can further mentor you on a more intimate basis. So again, thank you for your commitment to being here. Thank you for your commitment to your business and mostly to your dreams because at the end of the day, I mean, that's what it's about. As an entrepreneur, you have a dream. Our job is to help you get there. So let me tell you how this is going to work, okay? The logistics, we have all the Rich Dad Advisors here in one place, and that's nothing short of a miracle to begin with to get everybody's schedule aligned. So we're all here in one place on your laptop, and the topic we're going to be talking about is this one right here, entrepreneurship. That's right. How to win and succeed as an entrepreneur in 2014 and as an investor, mostly the Rich Dad way. So each of us are going to be chiming in on our views and predictions based upon our particular areas of expertise and giving you some specific, tangible, takeaway tools that you can use right away so you get 2014 off to a great start. Now, there's one thing we all have in common besides being a bunch of characters and talking all over each other. The one thing we do have in common is we're all entrepreneurs, all successful entrepreneurs that have been through good times and bad economic times and have still been able to grow. And that is what we want to be able to pass on to you so no matter what the economy's doing, you're going to do well. You know, now if you have some questions to ask of us, what we want you to do is we want you to go to 22 Social, we're going to go to this website. Can you see this? There we go. It's www.22s.com slash 53712. So if you have questions, just go to that place, post your questions. We'll do our best to get to some of them if we can. Also, if you're enjoying this program, there's a button right up above my head, a share button right above my head, so that you can share this with other people. Because the more people you have on your team, the more people thinking the way you're thinking, the easier it is going to be for you to make money in 2014. Now, I'm going to start by saying this, is that I met Robert, oh, back in early 1980s. And he was a struggling entrepreneur with his wallet company and I was a struggling entrepreneur with my little surf shop in Waikiki and as we as we engaged in this journey going forward what we realized it had two parts and this is the unique twist to Rich Dad that we're going to be covering here it's both a business development journey that is you're going to get some very very hard and fast tools here but to be an entrepreneur, it's also a personal development journey. You know what I'm talking about. It's being able to control that little voice between your ears because being an entrepreneur in 2014 is, not, is no joke. It's not going to be for everybody, but the people that take the, our advice and are willing to go with us, you're going to do extremely well. So I'm going to start kicking this off, and I'm going to pose the first question to the group. We'll see who raised their hand first. I want to know, and what everybody out there wants to know, is what's it going to take to be successful and to be able to win as an entrepreneur in 2014? Who wants to give it a go first? Well, this right. is, the, this is a, the part where we talk over each other, right, Ken? Yeah. Exactly. Well, why don't we let Tom go first? So, 
So as you were talking, um, Blair, you know what occurred to me is 2014 is not going to be for the faint of heart. And I, I think that's the key. And I, I think that personal development side, I mean, I think that's what brought all of us advisors to Rich Dad in the first place, is not because we wanted some specific financial information, which I think you can get in a lot of places, but because we wanted the personal development. And I think that's what we all get. I mean, I, I'm looking at Josh and Lisa here. And, you know, these guys are, the, uh, I think, the king and queen of personal development um, and actually going to the seminars and, and learning and developing. And, and to me, in 2014, when we look at this coming year, we have to look at what's going to make us stronger as individuals and as leaders in particular. I mean, the advisors, we're all going to, in what, three weeks? to Braze Island so that we can become better leaders, so that we can get some personal development and leadership. We're not going to talk about business, we're going to talk about leadership. So, so to me, that's, that's the number one key here as we look to this next year. Well, Tom, while you're on there, why don't you give them a little bit, you know, your little earn the right, you know, what you do as, as one of the advisors. No, sure. So I am the uh, Rich Dad Advisor for Tax and Wealth Strategies. I have an um, international CPA firm called ProVision. And I've uh, been doing this for about 35 years, uh, this profession. So I've been in big four accounting firms. I have a master's of tax. I've been uh, serving entrepreneurs and investors for my entire career, with the exception of four years when I was with a Fortune 500 company. So I love entrepreneurs. I love investors. Um, do, we, we have a lot of clients in real estate, and all of our clients are entrepreneurs. So um, that's where I come from. And of course, what, eventually, we're going to be talking about taxes, right? So we can come back to taxes because that's, of course, the best subject we can be talking about. <laughs> well, that's I know you love taxes, Andy. What were you going to say? You had your hand up. What were you going to say? What do you? What's your predictions for 2014? Well, Tom took the the words right out of my mouth. I'm excited to study leadership, and you know we have a saying at Rich Dad that knowledge is the new money. And I think from my background, which is paper assets, uh, knowledge is a big deal. I started out like many of the people watching this hangout, I would imagine. Uh, I didn't go to Wall Street or anything like that. Uh, I just became dissatisfied with where I was in, in my paper assets. And so uh, I came to a point of decision. Do you, you know, keep doing what you're doing or learn more? And through that, I've, I've learned that the more we learn, the more we earn, and the more protection we have. Well, in 2014, uh, there's going to be some rough water, I think. And the more educated a person is, and the more they ask, what should I study, before they ask, what should I buy, the better off they're going to be. So uh, I'm looking forward to 2014, though, Blair. There is a ton of opportunity to be had. In, uh, in any asset class, whether you're an entrepreneur in business, real estate, or, uh, or in paper assets. It's going to be a great year. But I agree with Tom. Uh, personal development, leadership, educated. The more we know and the more we learn, the more we're about to earn. Awesome. Thanks. Anyone else? Garrett, you want to pop in on that one? I do. Uh, thank you, Blair. Uh, my name is Garrett Sutton. I'm the uh, Rich Dad Advisor on Asset Protection and Corporations. and. Uh, I guess I met Robert playing rugby against him uh, way back when, and uh, I knew he was a good player because all the girls were around him. Uh, anyway, it, it's been uh, enjoyable working with Robert all these years and, and with Blair and the rest of the team. I personally think that 2014 is not going to be a breakout year. I, I think that's in the future, uh, but I do believe that you do need to take steps to protect your assets no matter what market. And when we talk about personal development and business development, in asset protection, we look at both of those. We want to protect your personal assets. We want to uh, protect your business assets. And as we go through uh, this webinar, we'll talk about some of the strategies and some of the trends that are emerging for 2014 so that you can really protect yourself uh, into the future. Good. Thanks. Anyone else? Ken. Yeah, thanks, Blair. Uh, well, first of all, it's it's great to chat with everybody, and and uh, I'm the real estate advisor for Rich Dad, and um, uh, some of you may know that uh, all the advisors here have their own businesses, and so while we're advisors to Robert, we're very busy running our own firms all over the place uh, internationally, and. Um, 
And of course, when we go out and speak and we do things like this, it's uh, it's completely voluntary. There's no pay exchange or anything like that. And, and and that's I think really important piece to mention because, you know, we're all here to really educate people. And um, and uh, so I just wanted to I wanted to say that first. But I I was I have a real estate firm called MC Companies, and we're we happen to be based in Scottsdale, Arizona, and, and uh, that's where I am now actually. I'm at the Rich Dad offices, which happens to also be in Scottsdale, thankfully, and I'm um, in actually Robert's office, so it's good that he's not here right now. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I was I was buying real estate, and I had been buying real estate since college, and I ran into Robert, I don't know, maybe eight, nine years later, and uh, he ended up investing with us, him and Kim, and, and now they've invested in hundreds of millions of dollars with us along with lots of other people and, and then uh, along the way he asked me to write this book the ABC's of real estate investing which I did and I'm like well why would anybody want to you know learn what I have to say and, and next thing I know that book um, is done extremely well and it's now in 20 languages and, and uh, so there's a real thirst for knowledge out there of people that really want to learn from for real people uh, doing the real thing in their own businesses and not just people that are standing on stage and, and trying to pitch you something. Well said. Well said. Well, you know, the other thing is, is the other thing, Ken, and, and everybody, is that, you know, we always talk about everybody's got a great idea, everybody's got a million dollar idea. But the problem is a lot of those ideas people don't ever make any money with. Now, obviously, my bias is the reason is because they don't know how to sell it or how to market it, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But from each of everybody's expertise going forward, maybe Josh and Lisa, you guys could, could address this one. Why, what is it that stops people from living the entrepreneurial dream? What, is it, what, what are the pitfalls? What are the issues and what advice could you give them? And even what do you think it's going to be like in 2014? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Blair. So it's a great question because Lisa and I started out as employees. I was running nightclubs in Las Vegas. <clears throat> Lisa was a police officer, and I wish she arrested me, but that's not how we met. <laughs> and it, it, we were faced with, are we really going to do this? And the, the kind of interesting part about that is I was too stupid to know any different. I read the books. I said, okay, let me go do that. We went out, we did it, we, we made a lot of mistakes, but we kept doing it. Where I think sometimes people get so smart, they paralyze themselves. So, so some of that is, what can you do about it is trust a coach and actually listen to the coach and do what the coach advises you to do. And we found is that the people we thought were our coaches were really our drinking buddies, our friends that had never really accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. So we were listening to the wrong advisors. So we had to change our friends, we changed our advisors from people that had been there, done that. And that has been a huge learning lesson for us through the years. Yeah, I think another key point is the risk. A lot of people are afraid of risk, they're afraid of fear, they're afraid of failing, and so they don't take that risk to live their dreams. And that's where personal development comes in um, so heavily and building the right team who's going to support you into obtaining your goals and taking that risk. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys did it. You guys actually did it in a really short period of time too, relatively speaking to most businesses, right? I mean, what would you know, from from zero to to where you are now? I mean, how long did that take? Um, well, short period of time, but we kept reinvesting into to ourselves into our business. So the, the business that we just sold recently was on a 12-year cycle. We built it up to a point where it was time to sell it. We had private equity groups coming to us. We had sold. But the key part is we kept the asset, being the real estate. We, we tied them up on a 10-year triple net lease, sold the business, but kept the true asset, which is the real estate. And it was through the Rich Dad Advisor series that we'd learned this. And we also, that's how we survived the 2008 crash is we invested for cash flow, we built it on sound fundamentals, we used the BI triangle, sound fundamentals with personal development to overcome those pitfalls. Awesome, great job, awesome job. Thanks. Darren, yeah. Darren, Darren, some of you may not know Darren, Darren's kind of new to the Rich Dad Advisor team, but he's an old, old friend from Canada, and his specialty is raising capital. How he is you, old. 
how do you how do you see 2014 rolling around? Is cap is there more or less money to be had, and how do you get it? Well, before I get to that question, just thanks again for everybody for participating, and I'm glad I could go last here as far as introducing myself because everybody listening, I, I did the same thing. I got to watch and listen to all the advisors and Robert Kiyosaki and Kim Kiyosaki for years before they asked me to become an advisor, and it was just through just personal development and learning and doing. And what I think Josh touched on was it's really important, in my opinion, if you want to get good financial advice, listen to people who are doing it. And Ken mentioned the same thing. We all have businesses here. So what I would do is I read the Rich Dad Poor Dad book, and I started going to every event I possibly could to hear Robert live as well as the advisors. And it was really simple. I just did what they told me to do. I just listened. And I would go back to Canada, and I would uh, you know, try to do the things they suggested. And next thing you know it, I'm raising a lot of capital because I have a lot of real estate experience. I raised about $150 million of other people's money, and I never have to worry about banks saying no to me. I don't ever have to worry about running out of money. And Blair, to answer your question about 2014, I don't, I don't even care what year it is. Once you learn the skills of how to raise capital and then to take advantage of all the other advice on this panel, like how to protect your assets, how to sell, how to market, how to manage properties, I mean, you, you'll be rich forever because you always know the skills. So hopefully that answers the question. Blair, and again, just thanks everybody for uh, allowing me to be here. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks for that. You know, I, you, you guys talked about a bunch of things. You talked about paralysis. You talk about fundamentals and having good mentorship. But li I think everybody would like to know, you know, just from your particular areas, you know, like Ken, let me go with you. From a property, you know, a lot of people are, are interested in property through Rich Dad. What are the what do you see coming down the pike? What do you see that's going to be happening and how should and what should people what kind of training or education do people need to be able to take advantage of it? Sure, thanks Blair. Well, I think uh, before we look forward, we got to kind of look back and just see some of the mistakes people made, I think, because I believe that they're going to make the same mistakes. So for if if there's any takeaway at all that people can have today, Please just look backward and don't make the same mistakes that you saw maybe perhaps some of your friends or family make or maybe people that you knew. And One of the biggest mistakes, as Josh um, touched on it, was that when we invest, we invest for capital gains. Uh, that's what most people do. Um, and that's what 90% of the people do. But we, as a group, we invest for cash flow. Very different philosophy. And um, that's probably what's going to annihilate most people again um, in this next five or six year run, which I believe that we have already hit bottom in most markets, most major markets. And uh, we're already, last year we saw a 13% increase in, in, in homes in, in uh, the top 40 metros in the U.S. So, and I know we have uh, readers or listeners outside of the U.S., but and as far as the uh, United States is concerned, we're corrected. Now, not every market is corrected, and not every market is still good. Like, there's areas like Detroit, and there's areas that don't have jobs, and so you need those things for a market to correct. But what's going to happen is people are going to chase the dollar again, and they're going to try to time the market, and they're going to, and it's just basically gambling. And they're going to lose their money or investor money uh, in this next cycle again. So I would just uh, ask people to be very, very careful uh, on this next cycle. It's a great time to buy. That's been my experience in most of the markets. Um, and uh, if you do, base it on cash flow, and then hopefully you'll get the capital gains as well. Awesome. Good. Thank you for that. Anybody else want to chime in on your predictions for 2014? Tom, yeah. you had your hand up. Hey, B Blair? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that um, I, I'm seeing a, a question on the page from Macedonia, and, you know, about all the advice and what's right for my area and which business should I be in. And this is a hmm. key. You know, we have people all over the world here, and, and I realize that here's my book, Tax Free Wealth, okay? And this is a book that you think, well, taxes are different in every country, right? But they're not, and business isn't different in every country either. And this is, I think, this is an important message: is that Robert talks a lot about the difference between content and context. And when it and personal development, a lot of the personal development I've gotten over the years from from Rich Dad is about context, changing the way we think about it. So, for example, 
what what I've learned as I've traveled the world with uh, Robert and Kim and Kenny and you guys is that the tax laws in every country are effectively the same. They're simply a series of incentives for business owners and investors. Once you understand the context and the thought process behind business, for example, or behind real estate, it doesn't really matter. I, I remember Kenny and I were in Germany, what? Two three years ago, Kenny, yeah, uh, and all we, what we were told was, well, you can't do this in Germany, right? You can't do this here. And so what we did was, Kenny brought up a real estate guy. I brought up a tax guy from Germany, from a local person. And what did they do, Ken? They they told everybody, well, this it's exactly the same here as it is everybody else, everywhere else. You just have to have the right the you know the right thought process, the context. And I think that's what Rich Dad and what the advisors bring really better than anything is a different way to look at business and real estate and investing rather than looking at the specific investment or the specific invest um, or the specific business I would look at how do we I become a better investor how do I think differently so that I can get a better return from the exact same asset that I'm buying well yeah that's well said Garrett you're gonna say something yeah, thank you, Blair. Uh, I think one of the trends you're going to be hearing about in 2014 and into 2015 and beyond is crowdfunding. And crowdfunding is a way in which uh, a group of people can raise money. Uh, the SEC and other government agencies uh, over the last 80 years has made it more difficult to raise money because they want to protect widows and orphans. But people and governments now realize that for capital formation, for job creation, you need to make it easier for people to raise money. And so you're going to be hearing a lot about crowdfunding. Uh, the SEC has yet to come out with the final rules on it, but when they do, and it might be June of this year, you'll be able to advertise to raise money for your venture. You'll be able to bring in not only accredited investors, people with a million or more of net worth, but unaccredited investors as well, people who want to put in small amounts of money. And this is going to be a significant development for business. And it's not only in the US. In England, they're doing crowdfunding. In Canada, they're doing crowdfunding. And the European countries are looking at it as well. So I think this is going to be uh, a significant development. Now, it's going to be uh, written in my book uh, that's coming out, uh, Finance Your Own Business. And it also is touched upon, th this is kind of the nuts and bolts, but Darren is going to be talking about these types of issues of how to do it with business relationships and all in the art of raising capital. So we have two great resources for people uh, in the next six months for raising money. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, and, and, and if you're going to start raising money from a lot of people, you better protect your assets, too, because if all of a sudden they don't like you, they might come after you. Uh, that <laughs> right? doesn't happen. <laughs> right? Right. No, it does happen. You have to protect your assets along the way. But I think this is going to be a, a significant uh, change uh, for, for uh, businesses uh, who want to raise money. You've got to be ethical. You've got to have integrity. But if you do it the right way, you'll find it a lot easier uh, to raise money than it has been in the past. Well, you know, it's interesting because what's come up is I'm listening to everybody talk. Everybody's talking about fundamentals. You know, fundamental, you know, fundamentals. And, you know, I was with Robert this morning. We are doing his radio show. We're talking about sales. And he says, hey, who is it? Who is it? Someone, what are you, oh, it was Darren, you said it. It doesn't matter. If you have the fundamentals... If you know how to sell, for example, if you know how to be able to pitch a deal, then you can raise capital, then you can always find whatever the exchange commodity is at the time, whether it's money, whether it's gold and silver, whether it's, I don't know, watermelons, whatever it is that you're trading, you have the ability to do that. And I think that the core issue, the other thing in common with this whole group is we all know how to sell. That's why we're here. That's why we have the reach, and that's what we do. And that's a real fundamental. Kenny's talking about fundamentals, and everybody's looking for the next quick strategy. But you know, like I say, I think that that, that 2014 is the year where people are going to be less concerned. It's not going to be about lead generation. It's about b making relationships with people that are long term. It's not about uh, withholding information. It's about disclosing information to people because it's no longer buyer beware, it's seller beware. 
I mean, the average consumer is so much better informed today that if you don't know how to really talk to people, ask questions, get articulate your vision. We got a question here. Guy says he wants to go from six locations to 20 locations as an entrepreneur. Now that, that's pretty common, but what are the things that he's going to have to come up against? Anybody want, you know, again, based upon the fundamentals that we teach, anybody want to take a shot at that one? Well, where? Yeah, Darren. Well, a couple years ago, our company went through you know similar growth. We were one of the fastest growing companies in Canada. We went from again one office to about fifteen in just a couple of years, and it, it really goes back to your team. In my opinion, is the number one, the only way you're going to actually be able to grow from that uh, smaller size to a bigger size is definitely have to have a strong team. And if I can back up a little as well, it's pretty easy to grow that way and and to raise money if you just educate them, like we've all said. What I see across the world is more and more people are getting unhappy when they understand how the banks really work. And if you look at the bailout in the United States, uh, the banks, the big banks, they're the ones that got bailed out the most. And the more people that understand that their investments, their returns probably are not as good as they would have hoped, yet the banks keep making billions of dollars or getting bailed out, the more people will want to invest with you in your different opportunities, whether it's business or, or sales. So, of course, you've got to be able to raise capital, go from six to 20 locations. But Blair, why don't you go next and talk, talk to us about a team? Because you don't have a team, you're not going to be able to grow at all. Well, well, yeah. I mean, what makes thank you? I mean, what makes this advisor team so strong, and Robert and all, and our relationships with each other is that we're a team. And in one of the one of the Rich Dad Advisor books that I wrote, this one right here. There it is. Team Code of Honor. Probably powerful tool. As a matter of fact, if I were to tell everybody on this call right now, no matter what country you're in, one thing that you can do that will make the biggest significant difference, at least from my area of expertise, is to sit down with your team and create a set of rules that we call a Code of Honor. A set of rules like never abandon a teammate in need, uh, keeping your agreements, being on time. These types of things that, because here's what's going to happen. You guys jump in, and Andy, maybe you, could, you jump in after this one, is that I will tell you this, that 2014 and 15 are going to be crazy times. You're going to need to have, uh, to, to, to uh, Darren's point, you're going to need a team that's flexible. You're going to need a team that's going to be able to make changes quickly. And if you don't have the rules tight, they're going to jump, sh they're going to jump ship on you. That coupled with some personal development training so they have the opportunity to, uh, to, to make those decisions, but Andy, don't you know the same thing in the markets, right? Don't people the way people get hammered is they freak out, right? I'd have to agree, Blair. Um, <laughs> as I've listened carefully to what each advisor has had to say in the in the hangout, you know, I listened to Josh and Lisa say that part of the reason their business was successful is it was fundamentally sound. And as I look at the economy, and as I look at uh, things happening around the world, I'm not convinced that the fundamentals are as sound in the big picture as it was for Josh and Lisa's business. Kenny talked about trends and, and cycles, that there's trends that go up and down. And so that, that knowledge to understand how fundamentals work and how trends work is going to be key. Because what I find is people that invest in markets hope the market does certain things. Kenny spoke about cash flow, where we want to create cash flow no matter what the market does and position ourselves that way. So in the next year, we have some very interesting things to watch because we've used policies to prop up things, in my opinion, and at any time, these things can really turn and really really uh, go for a downturn. I certainly wouldn't want to be at the mercy of that. I don't want to have the knowledge to position myself to make money where things go up, down, or sideways. So I'd have to agree. This is this year is going to be an interesting year to watch to see how long. I, I think a lot of people have a sense that things can't continue the way they are in terms of the money that we print and, and the, the policy we have to prop up economies. It'll be interesting to see how, uh, how it works when we pull the medicine off, see how the patient does, so to speak. So it's going to be a fun year and I look forward to uh, you know our goal as advisors is to make education a lot of fun and to make complex things simple. That's why I like listening to everybody here on, on the Hangout. And I think it's been wonderful, by the way, chance to listen to everybody in this environment. We've got to do this more often. We've got to do this again. I'll bet people like to do it again. I know I'm enjoying it. This is fun. 
Yeah, no, it's awesome. Oh my, and by the way, if you are enjoying this thing, there's a link right above my head here so that you can share, get other people onto this Hangout because right now, as as it's been said, there's a lot of misinformation and bad information out there. And, and I think if you've got friends, you've got family, you have other colleagues, just get them to share this. Uh, go go to that link and, and, and share this with as many people as you can. So, so, Ken, talk to us a little bit about this guy who wants to expand his business. I, here, wait, before you do, here's another one. Here's a, here's a guy in Bogota who says he wants to start a business project from nothing, break his paradigms, and create a shopping center like a small mall. And, and it's like... It's like it sounds like he's never done anything like this before. I could get a lease with a bank, but I don't know if this is a good idea. How do I deal with the anxiety of, t of resources? I want to trick <laughs> rich dad. What do you want to say about that? Right. Well, first of all, I want to acknowledge Juan Carlos for sending that in from Bogota. You know, it's uh, I, the irony is I was in Bogota like a year ago, and um, uh, they let you in. Yeah, they did. They didn't let me out, but uh, I did get in. So, uh, it's luckily, I, uh, but it's a the reason why I like the question, Blair, is because in a lot of people we've been talking about raising capital, and as you know, I did a a video today with Robert too for the Rich Dad Coaching series, and one of the things that we were focusing on was that real entrepreneurs and real business owners most of the time are not using their own money to start the business or even buy real estate. Right. And so I think that that was one of the biggest uh, objections I had as a young man when was that I thought that I needed to have all this money in the bank and I needed to have all this savings or I needed to have all these rich people around me in order to pull it off. And that's just not true at all. What, what, what we really need is education. And, and so, you know, Juan Carlos talks about building a small mall. Well, the first thing I thought to myself is, if you're going to build a small mall, why wouldn't you build a big mall? You know, <laughs> because big malls get more rent than small malls, and, and you know, so uh, again, it, it goes back to business plans. And I know that that Garrett has a book uh, on business plans and how to develop them. And again, again, this this is part of the advisor series. These are great questions that people have all over the world, and I I think that if, if people just read the books, they're going to be much further ahead than most, most of the other people out there um, you know, that, are, that are trying to start from nothing because we all started from nothing too. That's correct. That's correct. Hey, hey Blair? Yeah. Can, can we just to add to that a little bit about the mistakes that people make when they do grow? Because sure. right. you don't have any experience with that, do you? Never. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> so so here's, here, here's what I always notice. There's a difference between a product and a business. Okay, a, a lot of people think I've got a great product or I can earn some money, but they have no business. And so when I look at it, I look at, at, at Kenny and Josh as and Lisa as examples. Okay, they both build sustainable businesses. Josh and Lisa, they were so sustainable they just were able to sell those sell their business for a considerable sum of money. Well, why? It's because they had the systems in place in, that somebody else could just take over. I mean, a lot of people, what they really do is they own their job. I just think it's just an important point to remember that um, you can grow too fast. Right, Blair? You can grow too fast if you, if you don't have the systems in place, if you don't have the processes and, and actually have the, as, as Josh and Lisa were saying, the, the coaching in place, then you're going to get in the. You could build real fast, but then you can collapse even faster. Yeah, Tom, I think you make a great point. We we had to be willing to learn from our mistakes in order to continue to grow. If we don't learn from the mistakes, then we we repeat them, and the mistakes can get bigger and bigger and more expensive and more expensive. Time. But over the years, just that willingness not to let mistakes beat us down and continue to learn, continue to do personal development build a strong team, have sustainable systems, and always learning. We're always continuing to learn. Even though we just sold, we're continuing to learn more for our next, uh, our next venture, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Yeah, and one of the mistakes we made going through it is because it was our passion, particularly our field is social entrepreneurism. 
So the business we just sold was adult drug and alcohol rehab centers. That was our passion, but our business was always real estate. But the mistake we made is because it was passion driven, we never really planned for the exit. It wasn't a conscious thing. And everything that we could have did ended up coming back to us and we had to clean up anyways. So I think that's an important part as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is when you build your business, always have that exit in mind. Always keep that exit in mind because the value will be stronger and you'll end up with a business, not a job that you can sell and exit the market with. Last thing I want to say is with uh, Carlos, man. Carlos, you've got kahunas. And, uh, yeah, fantastic job. I'm going to put this on for you. This is a headband called Tough Mudder because it takes a lot of guts to build something, <laughs> to go into the marketplace. That's what it's going to take. So awesome job. I got to commend you. <laughs> nice. Did you steal that from Lisa? <laughs> hey, Darren. There's a, there's a fellow um, that has his own business. He says, can I change my financial context? If I'm a good salesperson, to be a good good at raising capital, are they the same thing? I don't think so at all. I think anybody can raise capital. I was not a salesperson when I went to university. I got a business degree, thinking that was the solution. I took accounting. I didn't know anything about raising money, or I didn't know how to sell anything. And what I try to teach people, and I don't have the time to do it today, obviously, is anybody can do it with just a few simple steps. So you don't have to be blessed in in being a salesperson per se. Anybody can raise money. You just have to have, again, good projects, good fundamentals, as we've talked about before. Cool. Andy? Uh, when you talk about uh, the difference between being a salesman and raising capital, we need sales skills to persuade and communicate well. But as I've watched the other advisors, particularly Kenny, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll say the bigger the brochure, the worse the deal. I've heard them say that. And smart entrepreneurs, particularly accredited investors, people who have money to give, you know, I don't think it's so much the, the persuasion and the, and the fancy language that you have is it's the, the quality of your deal. I think uh, a deal attracts money. When I was playing basketball, one of the things my coach said is if you do the right things, the ball will find you. And I think your communication skills are more about communicating the value of your of your deal and the BI triangle that you've built as opposed to just being slick or being able to talk people out of money. And, uh, and you'll get better investors that way, in my opinion. So I wanted to chime in on that. But I agree with Darren. It's, uh, it, we always need to have the ability to communicate, sell, and lead. But you also have to have a solid deal to attract money, and then it finds you. Yeah. Garrett. The other thing I would mention uh, for Juan Carlos and others, if you're just getting started, uh, consider trying to find a mentor. Uh, Robert talks about this a lot. Kenny talks about it in his books. You know, having a mentor right at the start where you offer your services, you don't get paid, but you learn under their tutelage, can be a great way to get started. You may not be able to get that first small ball deal together. You just you don't have a track record, you don't understand enough, and to have a mentor, someone will take you under their wing and guide you through a couple deals can be invaluable. So, uh, you know, mentoring is one of the key uh, aspects of the Rich Dad philosophy. So I would consider that one, Carlos. Great idea, great idea. Yeah, you know, there's another question that came in from uh, Sharina, and she said, what's the best strategy for me as a woman uh, to start my own business while going back to school and educate myself. And I think that from our perspective, it comes back to the same thing you're saying, Garrett, is that A, get yourself educated is the, uh, in business. And the best way to do that, I mean, I mean being an entrepreneur, you got to be a risk taker for sure, but you can mitigate your risk by working with mentors, working with a coach, working with somebody that's going to step you through some baby steps before you go out and do the big ones. That's why Robert and I and the team, we always recommend if you want to get into business, learn how to sell, find a good network marketing company that, that has training. The key is training and education. Everybody wants tricks. Everybody wants strategies. But what you're hearing on this call, even the guy with the headband on, <laughs> got some education and, and was willing, and was willing to 
surrender is the word that I would use. Surrender to the discipline that a, that a mentor or a coach will give you. I, I mean, I, I can tell you whether it's my health, whether it's my personal development, whether it's my business, finance. I mean, and these guys for me are mentors for me. You know, Tom says, this is what you're going to do with your taxes. I do it. Kenny says, property, this is what you do. I just surrender and do it because I know they know what they're, they're talking about. Right. Yeah. Ken, what do you got to say? Well, what I was going to say to that question was uh, I think that there's a big difference between <laughs> successful businesses on how they how successful they are based on their original philosophy of money and versus passion and so I, I know it's kinda cliche but it's true so so in other words if 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 you're if you're trying to build a business solely based on making a lot of money off of people it's gonna have a very short shelf life if you build it based on a passion something that you really really like then uh, it's going to have a lot of sustainability because you're going to pour your heart and soul in it, and it's not going to feel like a job. You mean like and, taxes? Uh, uh, yeah, even taxes. I don't know how you do it, Tom, but you love <laughs> that tax code. Um, but you know, Tom's passionate about taxes, which is why his company is growing so fast. And and I, I think that that's a big distinction. So I think a lot of people are looking for entrepreneurship as a way to to replace. Um, you know their income and potentially become financially free but I think it's even more important that they don't just settle into that you know same corner job or corner cube or whatever like a lot of a lot of people have done after they graduate with a degree and they get kinda of pegged to a spot and next thing you know twenty years later they're still in that spot and they're unhappy and their pensions are gone so uh, you know, I think it, it, that's probably the hardest thing is to find out exactly what it is that that you really want to do. Good advice. Good advice. I mean, I, you know, I know that Robert and I were talking about it this morning that he went to work for Xerox and I went to work for Burroughs. And, you know, we didn't even know what we we didn't know what our entrepreneurial dream was at, at that time, but we just knew that we were stupid. You know what I'm saying? We just <laughs> We didn't know. We just knew that we couldn't hold on to money to save our lives, and we, in, in order to maintain our lifestyle, we had to learn how to sell. And if we wanted to get a date, we had to learn how to sell. And so, for me, I think that I really believe that 2014, those people that really work on their personal development, selling skills, they'll be able to raise capital, be able to find their entrepreneurial dream, they'll be able to do all that. But if you don't have the fundamentals, if you don't, if you if you don't know how to keep yourself above water in a pool, you're going to drown. So rather than trying to learn how to do breaststroke, just try to tread water and see if you can do that first. Which is what I think is like.
I didn't know how to spell it. We'll be right back is what it says on this phone. <laughs> I don't know if they can see it. I don't know if they can see it, but anyway, Brandy checked it and it says we'll be right back. Maybe we overwhelmed the uh, we we overwhelmed Google. Yeah. I don't know. But I guess the feed over on uh, Rich Dad's side is what messed up. That's the message it says, right? Ah. Uh, hey, guys. Yes. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, it seems to have locked up, but I'm trying to get it back online. Okay. What's uh, Jen doing? What's Jen doing back there? Mike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's hiding. What was that? <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, All right, give me a minute. I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> All right, we're here. No wonder she didn't want to work for you anymore, Ken. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Andy, Andy's, Andy's texting me funny stuff. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Hey, guys. Yeah, yeah you're live again. Right. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> we're back. Sorry, those of you that we lost out there, we're sorry we uh, had a little bit of a, a feed problem here, so we're back online. We were talking with Tom about taxes, and he gave you the secrets to how to avoid tax, so if you missed it, you're going to have to talk to him later. No, we didn't. <laughs> but, um, but seriously... Um, what Ken was talking about, you were talking about that tech, uh, healthcare, and yeah. oil and gas are the yeah. areas you're, you're looking at, to yeah. go into those areas. Yeah, so, so I, I think a lot of people look at real estate and they look at a house or a building and they go, okay, I'm going to buy that. Uh, what we look at is we look at market dynamics and demographics first. And, and so, you know, we're looking at tech. You know, tech's supposed to grow two to one for jobs. We look at energy. Uh, the U.S. is going to surpass Saudi Arabia in 2015, um, which means lots of jobs. And then, we're, of course, we're looking at healthcare. So those are the three areas that we're focusing on. And, and each city has, um, uh, is going to respond differently, no matter where it is. So up in Calgary, Canada, it's already responded. And uh, you, know, the, you, you can go up there as a laborer and make uh, over $100,000 a year. And uh, in the tar sands up there, and, and so so you start to look at these things, same as North Dakota or in, in Texas, and and you want to buy real estate in those areas where there's there's lots of demand, and I think that's that's the that's the main thing that we're focused on for next year is we you know you don't want to be you don't want to go to an area that has a declining population and 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 jobs because you're going to have a piece of real estate that nobody's going to want to want want to uh, move into or even office in so. What you want is you want to be uh, not necessarily a trendsetter, but you want to follow some of these trends and uh, and try to get in there before uh, the prices jump really, really high. And, and at the same time, making sure that it cash flows. Awesome. Thanks. Any other com Any other comments about that? Do you want if I say something, Blair? Sure, go for it. What I'd like people to maybe consider as well is you don't have to be an expert at everything. So what I simply did was I got to know Ken over the years and started to invest with him and I thought you know why try to you know be better at buying real estate than Ken or better than ma better at managing properties than Ken so everybody can listen to this as well you know maybe partner up with someone who's really good at managing and buying properties and you can be the expert in raising capital put all your focus onto that so we made a really good partnership Ken and I we would raise money in Canada and invest with you know, some of the world's best property investors and managers which was Ken in my opinion so you know you can also just focus on what you like doing, what you're good at, and find other people, put that team together, and everybody wins in that situation, in my opinion. I think you know, that's I would, a good. That's I, a good I point. always have to laugh when people say that they do their own taxes, and I'm going, why would you ever do that? Right. I mean, why why would you spend you know spend the time trying to figure out you know tax codes and tax law and stuff like that when you can hire somebody? You know why why would you try to rehab yourself, right? Alcohol and rehab, and when you could go to Josh and Lisa and get rehab. That's right. That's right. Andy, what do you want to say about cuz you're probably one of the best teachers, educators out there and you see people all the time. They want to make they want to make a quick hit in the market. They want to they want to go out there and 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 knock one out of the park. What do you say to those people? And what advice do you give them for 2014? Well, 
one of the things that uh, you know that Kenny Kenny just finished saying was to invest for cash flow. And many people, you know, have made money flipping houses before, trying to buy low and sell high. And I find a lot of people want to make that quick buck that you mentioned, Blair. You know, buy low and sell high. And there's certainly certainly ways we can do that. But what Robert's game is called is cash flow 101. And what allows someone to get out of the rat race is to establish cash flow. So one of the things that we enjoy teaching, and we make this fun and uh, inter hopefully uh, also entertaining is how we can use the stock market to produce new money and cash flow uh, much in the same way that that a, uh, a real estate investor likes to receive rents uh, regardless of whether the value of the property is going up and down we like to show people how to receive income regardless of whether their stocks are going up and down so one of the things I see coming in in 2014 uh, you know Kenny talked about technology growing healthcare growing and he talks about policies that are you know, creating uh, an environment of growth for these industries. On the global scale, I see a lot of policies from governments. There's been a lot of money that's been printed and a lot of uh, policies that, that have inflated uh, markets around the world. And what's going to be fun to see in 2014 is how these markets begin to react to these policies. Uh, are companies going to be earning more money because we've printed more? And most importantly, I'm interested to see is when they begin to taper some of their policies is whether the market withstand this. What our goal is is to help people understand what these trends look like when they change, but to maintain a cash flow, whether it goes up, down, or sideways. So I think the person that is tied to the market in 2014 hoping it goes up, you know, it may continue, it may not continue. But the one thing I do know is the person that understands cash flow strategies is going to continue to do well throughout the year, whether it goes up or down. But in a nutshell, I see volatility, I see more movement, and uh, the right kind of investors with the right knowledge are going to be able to capitalize on that. And what we simply try to do is make that knowledge fun and exciting to learn about for investors that want to know more about paper or real estate or business, understanding trends, things like that. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for that, Josh and Lisa. What's your what, what's your strategy going forward, two thousand fourteen? Yeah, it's it's a good question. <clears throat> we definitely see inflation coming. Uh, we see all around the world middle class <clears throat> continuing to be squeezed, and a way out of that is is entrepreneurship. Is that if someone would like to stay an employee, they love their job, but like Tom mentioned, have multiple quadrants going on. Also do investments or also start a part-time business. That's one of the only ways you're going to be able to keep your head above water as prices start to increase. <clears throat> Basic costs of living, electricity, power, gas, we see all of these things continuing to rise. So building a vehicle that can help you stay afloat on that uh, inflation process. Josh, I'll tell you, I see an increase in demand for orange headbands starting right now. I think I'm <laughs> bullish on the headband. I think everyone's going to want one. So, well, well, since you mentioned that, I'm also uh, <laughs> to see our book, The Social Capitalist. Uh, we wrote this book, and we have a uh, spokesperson here who'd like to mention that book for us. <laughs> awesome. That's funny. But you know what? Yeah, the, the truth of it is what you're hearing, the common – the common link here is education. It's funny because we just got a just got a message. When do you know you have enough knowledge to start even though we'll be learning our whole lives? And you know what? That's exactly what you're talking about, Josh, is overcoming the paralysis. Mm -hmm. is, is that right. you know when do you know you have enough knowledge? You don't never know. You're never gonna have enough knowledge. You just gotta right. start and then you quickly one thing in common with everybody here is we've all learned the most, not in school, but learned by making mistakes. Yes. Learn by screwing up. Learn by getting shut down a few times, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody sits there and go, whoa, I wish I was big, rich entrepreneurs like you. They go, hey, you want to see the battle scars? But, but the truth of it is if you're already taking the hits, you might, to your point, Josh, you might as well be doing it in your own business. You might as well be, rather than taking the hits, working for somebody else, you might as well take the same hits, building something that you want. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely, because taxes will kill you if you don't. If you stay an employee, you're going to get ripped off. You might as well take that leap of faith and go for it. That's right. 
Awesome. Yeah. And with the education, you know, we have no control over what the government's going to do, over what, you know, other companies are going to do. Just we can educate ourselves, continue to learn, and make the best choices and decisions for us, whether it's an employee, small business owner, big business owner, or investor. It's what works for the individual. It's follow your passion, follow your dreams. There are so many more social entrepreneurs heading into the market nowadays. Even colleges are starting to have majors tailored towards social entrepreneurship, which is solving social problems. There are so many social problems out there today that deserve solving, and it's the right market for it. Yeah, it's the entrepreneurs that are going to take a stand and say, you know, enough's enough. I'm going to address this problem. I may not have the solution for it, but I'm going to go into motion. I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to build a business that addresses these problems. And in 2014 and beyond, we see a continued trend of social entrepreneurs entering the market with the passion, with the drive, with the vision that governments can't solve these problems all around the world. It's going to be it's going to be the community that solves the problems. Right. Yeah, it's it's interesting you say that because you, we all know that one of Robert's deals, one of Robert's big passions is to create a global entrepreneur organization. You know, a group of of like-minded, rich dad. Um, uh, entre type entrepreneurs that really want to make a difference, make a good living, and, and make it and, and 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 operate the rich dad way. And Darren, you're going to be working. You're going to be you're heading up that project, right? Yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. I think I've lived it. I for those that don't know, I just read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I just started living the lessons. Started going to events, meeting all the advisors, reading all books, and just again, like I said earlier, just doing what they suggested. And then all of a sudden, Robert gets to know you and. Next, you know, he asks you to have a worldwide program to uh, to help out entrepreneurs, which which we all want to do. That's that's our passion. We want to help everybody out. So we're going to start that Blair in March. We're going to launch that program in Poland and Amsterdam. Awesome, awesome. Tom, you had you had your hand up. What, 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 yeah, well, I, I I think actually I think the the Geo Project, the Global Entrepreneur Organization Project, is a really good example of just getting started. I, one of my favorite sayings is that perfect is the enemy of good. And when we when we try too hard, you know, I I'm an I'm a recovering A student, you know, I uh, I and, and A students we have to have everything just right. Okay? I mean Lisa knows this, she's an A student. Um, Josh would never have any idea about this. But <laughs> when 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 you're you know when you're taught to always be right and you gotta be ready and, and it's gotta be perfect. It, it's like you say Blair, you, it's you're never perfect, but what I like about the uh, geo program that, that Darren's developing, we've been de this has been in development for several years now. Right. And what I like about it is it gives everybody everybody an opportunity to start with with less risk and, and to really get some education at the same time they're going. But it goes back to you know the the key is you've got to have a passion for it. Like Kenny says, if you're out there doing it for yourself. And just to make money, it's it's not it's it's a short-lived venture. Whereas if you go in because you love it, I mean, I got into I love I do. It's weird, but I love taxes, and I think that's you know that's what, and it's what makes it fun. I mean, why would you do something you don't like doing? I mean, if if you don't like taxes, why would you do them? If if you don't like uh, uh, real estate, why would you do real estate? You know, do something you love, but just get started. And I think the uh, GEO program is going to be a good way for a lot of people to get started. Yeah, by the way, GEO stands for, here we go, just so you get it. Here you see. See that? Global nice. Entrepreneur Organization. That's what we're talking about. And you'll hear more about that in the months and we, weeks to come. And, you know, there's a first step on that we'll talk about toward the end here. Garrett, what do you have to say? What do you have to say about the pitfalls? You're the attorney. You're supposed to be protecting us. You're supposed <laughs> to keep us out of trouble. Uh, what kind of trouble do typically entrepreneurs get into that you can tell people how to avoid? Here's my prediction for 2014. People will still sue each other. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to continue. So we need to protect ourselves. We need to engage in asset protection right at the start. It doesn't matter how much money you're making at the start. You need to have that LLC, that corporation. <laughs> No matter what country you're in, you need to have an entity to protect yourself. So when you get started at the very beginning, uh, talk to your attorney, talk to your advisors, and let's get you set up with a good entity to, to protect your assets. That, that would be my, 
uh, recommendation uh, for January 2014. Let's get yourself protected right off the bat. And we had someone asking about the books. Uh, you know, this book here, uh, Loopholes of Real Estate, you know, it was written back in 2003 and 2008, and, and we've updated these books with brand new information. Uh, so, you know, we, we keep these, um, these books up to date. You know, the, the, the markets change, and uh, we keep up with them. So uh, I just wanted to let the, uh, the person who asked the question know that some of these books are just brand new with great new information for 2014. That's right. That's right. And you know, and thanks for thanks for put put putting that. Out. You know what? It's not net, you know, the school of hard knocks is okay. There's only one problem with the school of hard knocks, and that is you can get yourself knocked out before you get a chance to 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 make something happen. And and you know, it's not necessary to take a 4 by 4 up to the forehead in order to learn how to do these things. And you know, like I said, the one thing that's amazing about this whole group of people the, the the advisors and Robert's been very shrewd about who he picks, and I've known him longer than anybody. Is that to have the to be a great entrepreneur is one thing, but to also have the heart of a teacher, a person who genuinely wants to help other people. We have our own businesses. That's not the point. The point is, is we want to be we want to be able to support other people to be the best they can be. Ken, what do you think? What are the pitfalls? What are the, what are the things that you wish somebody would have told you before you started? Well, I, I first of all, I wish that there was a geo program. Uh, you know, I mean, the, yeah, true. We all, I mean, we all learned from the school of hard knocks, you know. But if I was taught under the tutelage, um, <laughs> that's well, a great word. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it just seriously, I would have just had, I would have been way further ahead. Uh, you know, and just and you know, the thing is, is like like Andy said, you know, he was talking about nutshells earlier. Well, you know, in a, in my nutshell, you know, I I think I think inflation is gonna is gonna uh, be a big big problem, and I think if you look. Um, if you're if you're meeting with a mentor or a coach or you know under the tutelage of maybe another entrepreneur, then what what you're going to find is they're going to be keen on these kinds of things and they can guide and direct you as as you go and ask questions. And I you know I, there's and, and when I was a young man, there was never a time I was turned down to ask. When I would I, I would always find like my uncle was the first guy I asked. I said, you know, can I just sit down and have a cup of coffee with you and, and talk to you about some of the things that I have ideas about? And it was one of the first lessons I learned is that uh, entrepreneurs are generally very, very generous people. And so things like inflation, which everybody on this advisor panel knows is going to happen, and if you if you ask, 99% of the people believe it's going to happen because of the way we've been printing all this money. And so if all you do is just make... Uh, adjustments in your own portfolio or your own investments to hedge inflation, you're going to be better off. And so that's all we're talking about here is making very, very small moves. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. So we've got probably about 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 in the 15 minute, 10, 15 minutes left in the program. So I want you to, you know, we're just going to go across the board and 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 give your advice as advisors. You know, we all work with Robert. Sometimes he likes to listen to our advice. Sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> but, but, but the truth of it is, is when it does, it it all it all works great, and we operate as a team. So, so Andy, why don't we start with you? What's your what be your advice for two, final advice? Maybe that you haven't talked about yet for 2014. Well, I I think that risk is related to control, and so I would evaluate how much control you have over uh, what you're doing in your in your investing. Uh, one of the things that's difficult about paper assets investing is we don't get to control which way the market goes. And so uh, by using different strategies, different techniques, we can regain a certain amount of control over what's going on. So I see more uncertainty in the future. And if we want to be insulated from, uh, from problems, we want to have a certain amount of control. Uh, a great way Robert has talked about this is he uses insurance often where he'll say, look, if your house burns down, you've got to have insurance. And in uh, the United States, in Canada, 
uh, around the world in, in Australia, almost everyone has a retirement plan that they don't have any control of. So uh, my advice would be to evaluate how much control you have over your future, how much control do you have over your investments, and are you going to be able to depend on yourself to make things happen in this next year, or are you going to have to hope that, uh, that things work out that are beyond your control. So uh, I'm excited to, uh, to attack this year and take greater control over what I'm doing. Awesome. Thanks. Garrett, what about you? Well, a couple things, Blair. Thank you. I, I think this year, if you're going to be starting a business, I think you need to just factor in that the minimum wage is going to go up. Uh, I think that uh, not only on the Repu on the Democratic side, but even the Republicans now are starting to realize that the minimum wage is too low, and when when people get paid minimum wage, they have to access government benefits. And so I think there's going to be some political uh, push to increase the minimum wage. So as you're planning your business, take that into account. Secondly, we were talking about the school of hard knocks. If you don't have your asset protection in place, that hard knock becomes a really painful knock. And so you can lose everything. So be sure at the start, as I mentioned, get your entities in place so that if you do suffer a lawsuit, you don't lose everything in the in the process. You may be able to, you may have to lose your uh, business assets, but you're not going to lose your personal assets as well. But I, I think 2014 is going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be a good year. doing because uh, I think that I think this was the key to uh, success early on and, and I missed it completely as a young man and and I think that what happens a lot of times is you get out of school and there's not a lot of collaboration in the in the classroom certainly and there's not a lot of collaboration uh, generally and, and, you know it's kind of a survival of the fittest and, and once I learned the art of putting together a team and the art of collaboration um, my whole life changed, and, and I and I, I just would I just would ask people to to try to uh, just start by putting together other team members. You know, just last week uh, we're we're buying a huge portfolio in Texas, and um, and we I had 12 people around our conference table, and uh, all we did was brainstorm. Uh, and of course, when we left the room, we had a much much better. Uh, picture and idea of everything we wanted to do that I would have had on my own, and and that's all I'm saying. And so you know, everybody has uh, everybody has a lot of wisdom and a lot of input. And if you utilize people, um, and and they love to be utilized. Trust me, uh, you know, it, it, you can really really grow your business significantly. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I'm just going to chime in here too because I think that my advice for Josh and Lisa, I'm just going to say that my advice right now is to really learn and hone your selling selling skills. Learn how to do that. Learn how to manage the little voice between your ears. You know, I work with big organizations like L'Oreal, Redken, Duncan Brand, Singapore Airlines, and you know, to help them increase sales. But as Ken, as you know, because we worked together with your company a couple of weeks ago, is it really the path to getting that productivity is not a quick fix strategy. It's a personal development journey, getting people to really understand how to deal with conflict, how to trust themselves, have a level of confidence. And that's true whether you're working by yourself or you got a team of several hundred people. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, Blair, and, I, and I'll just I'll just tell you, you know, um, as being an advisor, you know, I used to have my company annual meetings, and we used to go in there and talk about numbers and performance and all that kind of crap, like everybody does. And I'm not saying that isn't important, and we do track those things. But when we brought uh, we brought a hundred people in in December, uh, you know, we study books, and we you know we study we work on them individually and personally. And what's happened is that. We've now we've now got people wanting to work for our company because what it's done is it's shifted the focus of the company numbers down to the individual and us wanting to develop them and of course now they're now our company's doing better as a result and it, it's 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 those little things that are, are those little things are very very important. 
Awesome. And, and and Josh, thank you, Ken. And Josh and Lisa, you're the you're the poster poster children for that one. I mean, you guys took the took the thing on and and you know now sold your business so many years later. So what's your advice to people going forward? Good question. And Kenny, you're spot on is that when we really focus in on the values of the company, honing personal development within the company, it dramatically changes mm -hmm. the company for the better. And it's definitely, I, I highly recommend any business owner that has people that work for them, it's your responsibility, stewardship to develop people. Also, would like to add is that in the Rich Dad formula, Rich Dad, and this is what I've learned, is we create a business, the business then pays for our real estate, the cash flow from our real estate is invested into energy, and the cash flow from that is then put into gold and silver commodities. That's kind of a step-by-step -step formula. Now, if you don't have that in 2014, I highly recommend that to build that because it's about the velocity of money. It's about the rich dad principles, how it all works, and there's tax strategies all the way through that Tom has assisted us in building, and it's really developed a strong um, foundation for our wealth. In addition, <clears throat> I wanted to add too is that you will lose money, you will, people will get mad at you, you will crash businesses and no one told me that. It's like I didn't want to make a mistake you know and so when my employees got mad at me I felt like I failed and all this stuff it's like you know what it's part of business. That's why personal development is so key so you can deal with that psychosis in between here when you have to go and, and sit down with someone and said, you know what, I love you as a person, but I gotta let you go. And to deal with that. Or to say, you know what, to your investor, I lost some money, but this is how I'm gonna handle it, and this is what I'm doing about it. It's so important to deal with this. Otherwise it affects this relationships. And the last thing I like to say is how important it is for for twenty fourteen is to study. Study what you love. Study what you're passionate about. In school, they had me study things that I wasn't interested in. So because of that, I checked out. But as an adult, I, I have the choice to study what I'm interested in. And I think that's huge in 2014 going forward is study what you're passionate about. Pick the advisor that you resonate with and go, you know what, I want to learn more from this person or in this particular field or whatnot. Like Lisa and I, we learned is that we really studied business but we weren't very good students of being parents. So in 2014, that's one of our personal goals is learning to be better parents, how to turn this knowledge into a better family because as an employers, it was easy for us to say you're fired. But for our kids, it's a little bit different. <laughs> so it takes a different leadership skill and that's what, that's what uh, I know I'm focused on and, and Lisa's as well. Yeah, one thing we do since it's uh, January just to to tag on to Josh's, we set our goals and we set action steps. And I know everyone sets their New Year's resolutions, but we look at it completely differently. We set goals in health, wealth, and happiness. And they're together and they're separate. So we have some goals that are completely together in all three categories and some that are separate. And we have clear action steps for each one. We post it up on our refrigerator and we cross them out as we obtain them. And some have to do a study. What are we going to study this year? What personal development courses are we going to take? How are we going to become better so we can be better in our communities? And a second thing would be also going back to team is when you build your team, make sure they have the same values as you. If your values are in alignment, there will be less upsets. Or when there are upsets, you know that you can get past them and make sure they have the skill set to do the position that you hire them for while they're on your team. And yeah, I think we've all said it, personal development is key. We have to know ourselves. We have to know how we function, how we're going to react to things, and how we're going to clear things when we have an upset so we can continue to move forward. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Great advice. Great advice. And Tom? <clears throat> Well, thanks, thanks, Blair. I, I, the theme I've been listen, I've heard here is team, and I think it's a really good theme. I, I think it's, I, I couldn't, couldn't think of a better theme for 2014 than establishing and improving your team. My, my goal personally for 2014 is to improve the team, and really improve the systems around the team. Because one thing that, believe it or not, I'm a little weak on is details. 
And uh, I remember hearing Donald Trump uh, uh, when I was in um, Australia a couple of years ago with Robert and Kim. Donald Trump was on stage. And I remember him talking about it's, uh, it's all about the details. And I think that when you have the right team members in place and they can each handle part of the details, then that's when you really start to thrive. Uh, the other thing I would say is that um, as Ken's talking about cash flow and Andy's talking about cash flow, I agree. I, I think cash flow is, is the king. And quite frankly, the fastest way to put cash flow into your pocket is to reduce your taxes. Reducing your taxes is really the easiest way to do that. So if you notice, there's eight advisors and there are eight disciplines of the BI triangle in um, Cash Flow Quadrant. When you read Cash Flow Quadrant, uh, Robert's uh, second book, and I think it's interesting that we have eight advisors, and I think we all have a particular specialty area. You know, mine happens to be ca cash flow, which is taxes and accounting. And I think that we all have to be looking at where do we where do we fit, because each one of us has a particular. Um, you know, something we're going to be particularly good at, natural instinct. And I think that when we put ourselves on the right seat in the bus and then bring our team members into the right seats and make sure that we have everybody we need on that bus and we've got that code of honor so that they know what the rules are for operating on our team. I, I think all of this comes together. I, I, I will say um, everybody, I mean, one of the greatest joys in my life is to being a rich dad advisor because I get to be with these clowns and uh, hang out with them uh, all over the world, quite frankly. And, and being on Google, Google Hangout is great, too. There goes one of the biggest clowns right there, Josh Lannon. And uh, I, I want to thank everybody for, for being on the call, on the, uh, the Hangout today, because, and make sure that you share this, because I just think that the more, the, the more we share with each other, the better off we're going to be as a, as a global team. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and thank you for saying that, Tom. And I think the one thing that we agree as advisors is that there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of bad advice, and there's a lot of people out there that are telling you what they're telling you that the path to financial freedom is just not true. And very, and I think the other thing of this of this thing, of this hangout has been mentorship good coaching, and there's very little of that out there. Like We've all said that if we had mentorship, it would have made a big difference for all of us. The other fact of the matter is the number of new people going into business is higher than ever before, as well as the failure rate. And you know what the truth of it is, is you've been listening, is that businesses fail not because of a bad product or service or even bad work ethic. If you're watching this, you're on a hangout someplace, one thing I know about you, you probably work your butt off. So that's not the issue. The issue is not knowing the traps and the hazards and the things that can sabotage your business, like running out of capital, you know, sales team fails, income dries up, the government taxes or regulates you into a hole, or you, know, or you have partnership problems, team problems. You know, I could go on and on. So you know, as Rich Dad Advisors, the reason we wanted to do this hangout is because we want you to win. If you've invested in Rich Dad, you've invested in the, this way of, of making money, we want to support. And we've all written best-selling books, but there's, there's, we wanted to be able to do more is what I'm saying. And we've done some life-changing seminars around the world. The only problem with that is very time-consuming for you and for us and very expensive for you and for us to do that. So we wanted to find out with an, come with another solution. So. What we decided to do is to find a way that we could actually mentor you more directly, more directly. Some of you have asked about the GEO program. This is the first part of it. So we decided to create a really one-of-a-kind, straightforward, real-time, no-holes-barred, seven-part webinar series that will give you specific strategies from us to you where you can ask very specific questions, much more private specific questions to give you some success for 2014. So in other words, one webinar from each one of us. So what you're going to learn in, those, in, in this, this webinar series, first of all, is how to understand and leverage the stock market in 2014 so you can grow your wealth. As Andy says, whether the market's going up, down, sideways, whatever it's doing. How to increase your income by double-digit percentages in a matter of days and weeks like I do with large organizations and small companies all over the world and build an amazing team that can sell for you so you don't have to do so much selling. And Gary will show you how to structure your business for success and apply the latest legal changes to protect your assets 
particularly over the next several years because as people get desperate for money and their emotions running high, intelligence running low, people may want to come after you. Tom's going to talk to you about how to use the tax laws to multiply your wealth and investments and to legally keep your money out of the government's pocket and in your own pocket. You know, and Darren's going to talk to you about how to fund your own deals, raise capital, no banks involved, and actually have investors lined up wait, wanting to buy from you because of who you are and what you're offering. The secrets of real property investing from Ken. In other words, the real deal how that creates cash flow, builds asset value no matter what the market's doing, and the formula, this is important, the formula for buying the property right to begin with. How to hedge inflation by investing in the right assets. And as Josh and Lisa will teach you in, in their intimate webinar with you is how to go from zero to millions using the rich dad formula in a few short years. The way this webinar series is going to work, it's really simple. It's 50 to 60 minute each webinar. They're recorded so that you can use them as a, a priceless library for you going into 2014. Now, it's going to be starting with, with Andy, I believe it's January 21st, yeah, that's right, January 21st at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. He's going to give you the secrets for making money in the markets in 2014. And we tried to put a price on this, which was kind of ridiculous, considering the fact that we've probably spent millions each learning some of these lessons and learning some of these strategies. But we figured that we put a price on it, we'd say $89 per webinar was fair, and then you can pick the webinar <laughs> choice, whichever one you, you, that you want to do. But we also agreed that what we're really interested in is somebody, as several of you have written in about, is that we're really interested in finding those of you who want to be part of a global community of entrepreneurs who really want to accelerate your business for the right reasons over the next couple of years and that we can be mentored by us on an ongoing basis. So this webinar series is actually the first step in that direction. Now it's limited because it starts next week and we're only going to do this one time to kick off 2014. So um, we also have our own businesses, we have our own stuff going on, and you know, just getting everybody on this call alone was nothing short of a miracle. So the, 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 the webinar series is in stone, it's not changing, and if you want to be on it, you're going to have to register, see if you can see that, by January 17th. You're, all you're going to do is you're going to go to this the link at the bottom of the page, it says www, can you see that? Yeah, there we go, RDA webinars.com. Yeah, rdawebinars.com. Register for that thing. And since you've been on this call and you've stuck with us for this 90 minutes, we, as an appreciation, we're going to extend to you a special VIP price. And the special VIP price, if you register now and get registered by the 17th, will be $95 for the whole series. That's right. You can have the whole series for $95. Simply go to www.rdawebinars.com. Register now. If you're interested in getting the...